Hey Hopscotchers, Kayla here. Welcome to the first episode of Learning with Hopscotch. Today, I'm gonna teach you about Newton's laws of motion and how you could use them to create a simple physics engine that will make your games feel more real. Sir Isaac Newton published his laws in his book, Principia Mathematica, in 1687. If you understand the laws of motion, you could predict how things in your world will move and interact with one another. This is cool because if you know the laws of physics, you could program a game world where the objects interact just like they do here in the real world. If you've ever played Super Smash Bros, Doodle Jump, or Angry Birds, you've already experienced this effect. These games all use physics engines to create a world where objects in the game behave according to the laws of motion. In this video, you'll learn how to make a simple physics engine so that objects in your game will follow the laws of motion. When you program rules into your world, it means that you don't have to program every little thing that your characters do. They could just follow the rules you set out for them. Your characters can have a life of their own, and you, the game creator, will have more time, energy, and creativity to devote to all the other aspects of your game, like the story and art. By the way, if you're visiting us for the first time, welcome to the Hopscotch channel. Hopscotch is a platform where you could code your own games, mobile apps, and art, and share them with friends and family. If you want to try out some of the concepts in this video, you could download Hopscotch on the App Store. We have a step-by-step -step physics engine video that will walk you through making your own physics engine in the app. But if you don't have an iPad, don't worry. These concepts are useful for any type of game making tool you care to use. To make a game that uses physics, it'll first be useful to review Newton's three laws of motion. Together, these three simple laws predict the complex ways that objects move around in the world. Newton's laws predict everything from how an astronaut will float around in a spaceship to what happens when you bounce on a trampoline. Once we understand these laws, we could program them to create game environments where our objects behave as if they were at the playground, swimming underwater, or floating in space. Newton's first law says, without an external force, an object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. The first part of the law is easy to see. If you look around your room, most of the items are standing still. They're at rest and just staying there. If you've ever seen an astronaut floating in space, you'll recognize the second part of this law, which says an object in motion stays in motion. They push off from a wall and continue moving at a constant speed. But here on Earth, if you're rollerblading or skateboarding, you always eventually come to a stop. This seems to contradict what we've just learned. Why don't you stay in motion? Well, it turns out there's an external force that's causing your motion to change. The ground is pushing you to a stop with the force of friction. This brings us to the second law. The second law of motion states, an object accelerates in proportion to a force that pushes it divided by its mass. Mass meaning how big it is. Acceleration means a change in velocity. So the harder you push or the smaller the object, the faster it'll speed up. Think about throwing a penny, which is not very big and doesn't have much mass. You could throw the penny a lot farther than you can throw your brother with a lot less effort. And lastly, the third law of motion says, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. When you jump on a trampoline, you land, push down on the trampoline, and the trampoline pushes back on you, catapulting you into the sky. The harder you jump down, the higher you'll jump up. Now that we've reviewed Newton's laws, let's talk about forces. I'm sure you've heard about gravity, another of Newton's discoveries. So where does it fit into all of this? In everyday life on Earth, gravity is the force which causes objects to fall to the ground. Gravity is also what keeps the solar system together. For our purposes, the most important thing about gravity is that it's a force that's always acting on us, pulling us in the direction of the ground. Let's program a game world with Newton's laws that has the force of gravity acting on our objects. We'll code Newton's first law of motion, and once we run our code, you'll see that our frog isn't moving. An object at rest 
stays at rest, unless acted upon by a force. So let's set up Newton's second law of motion, which says that an object accelerates in proportion to a force acting on it. This is where we could code gravity as a force constantly acting upon our frog. When we run the code, you'll see that the frog accelerates downward. It falls. That's because we coded the gravity force to pull our frog down. Now, you'll notice that the frog falls through the bottom of the screen. We can make this more realistic by coding it to stop at the bottom of the screen, so it looks like it's hitting the ground. That's where our third law comes in. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If our frog is falling down with a downward force, once it hits the ground, the ground will meet our frog with an upward force. The downward force of gravity and the upward force of the ground will both cancel each other out, causing our frog to stop moving. In other words, gravity is the reason why when we jump, we fall towards the ground, rather than continuing in a constant upwards motion off into space. Then when we hit the ground, the force of the ground pushing up on us is the reason we stop rather than fall through to the center of the earth. Cool. Now with just a few lines of code, we have the base of our physics engine set up with Newton's three laws of motion. Now let's add some more forces and see what we can make happen. First, we could add a jumping force that will let our frog push off the ground and jump into the air. When we jump, we send an upward force from the ground that will lift us into the air until gravity pushes us back down. Let's make our character jump each time we tap our device. Now that we created a jumping force that moves our character in an upwards motion, we could create a push force that will move our character side to side with the swipe of a finger. Finally, to make this feel more realistic, we'll add a friction force which acts upon our object and slows it down to a stop. All combined, it looks like this. It's a super fun thing to be able to set the rules of your own world with just a few lines of code and variables. We just set up the foundation of our physics engine and added forces. You'll notice that each of our forces has a numeric value. These values are either positive or negative numbers. So what does it mean to change the values of these things? Once you have the rules of physics in place, you could experiment with different values of these rules to make things in your game world behave in different ways. In other words, you could create different environments within your game. Want to make a high friction environment, like a character sliding on a carpet? Increase the friction force values. What about when we decrease the value of friction? Now it behaves like a low friction environment like an air hockey table or an ice rink. Smoother surfaces equals less friction. And what happens when we change the value of our gravity force? Well, we know the Earth's gravity is always acting on us. That's why when we jump, we're pulled back to the ground. Gravity is related to mass, which is related to size. If the Earth had more mass, then it would be more difficult to jump because it would be pulling us down with more force. By increasing the force of gravity, it looks like your character is on a huge, heavy planet with a strong gravitational pull. If you went to the moon, you'd be able to jump way higher than you ever had before because the moon is much smaller than the Earth and thus exerts a smaller gravitational pull. So when we decrease the gravity force, it looks like our character is in a microgravity environment. This could be the moon or a space station. These effects are interesting and we could definitely use them in our games. Now for the crazy part. Let's add some weird forces. Forces that don't mimic life on Earth at all. Like gravity actually being reversed, causing you to fall up onto your ceiling. And upside down jumping. You'll jump towards the ground and land back on your ceiling. Try and think of some more crazy weird forces you could add and comment your ideas down below.
All right, you just reviewed how physics is created in a game using Newton's laws. If you want to write your own code to simulate physics and create a game you could share with family and friends, you could download the Hopscotch app for iPhone and iPad and visit our physics engine tutorial to follow along and get creative in our mobile coding environment. Most importantly, I hope you could go ahead and play the games you know and love with a whole new perspective. Thanks for watching and happy hopscotching.